how do you top that talk? <laughs> I start with a handicap. I grew up uh, in a small printing press in Patna. Uh, my father was a writer, uh, a publisher and a small business entrepreneur. And my earliest memories uh, are of uh, walking around the press with him with the clanking sound of the machines, the feel of paper and the smell of ink. Black ink on white paper, black on white, always together. I cannot separate the two colors. For most people though, the contrast between black and white usually represents a choice. Two extremes, as in good versus bad, better versus average, right versus wrong, option A versus option B. To my mind, inspired by those wonderful memories of childhood, black and white do not just coexist. They exist because of each other. Like black ink on white paper. Unfortunately, uh, when confronted with black and white, our culture, our upbringing, our education conditions us to choose one versus the other. Either black or white. And I agree with the theme of this conference that life is, is indeed a spectrum of greys. But in saying that, I believe we oversimplify. Look a little closely and you will see that what we call grey is really black and white together, interspersed and overlapping. Grey, ladies and gentlemen, is not a color. In fact, life is as grey as the grey hair on my head, which after all is a mix of black and white. Today, I want to go a step further and suggest to you that other than in the most obvious situations, the notion of black or white is in fact limiting. And furthermore, uh, when we say that it is difficult to choose between one or the other, or we cannot choose, we in fact settle when we choose grey. In such situations, grey is kind of seductive. It is a little bit more comfortable and, and more balanced. Uh, relative to the discomfort and the unsettled feeling of dealing with both black and white together. I would like to suggest to you that embracing black and white, on the other hand, opens up possibilities that we did not know existed and did not think were possible. Allow me to show you how. I come from the world of business and education, so I'm going to use two examples, one from each. Take the example of India as a business destination. Most foreign multinationals are bewildered by the extremes in our country. We have a third of the world's poor, yet we also have the third largest number of billionaires in the world in India. We are the world's largest democracy. As you all know, about a year ago, 814 million citizens voted in a fair and free elections for the first time ever in human history. Yet, most of our political parties feel like a feudal monarchy if you look at the way they are led and governed. Today, we are touted as the world's fastest growing nation 
and the most attractive destination for investments. Yet, we are ranked 142 out of 189 in terms of the ease of doing business. Not surprisingly, at a recent meeting with a group of senior German executives, the inevitable comparison to China came up. They said, well, things are very predictable in China. They are either black or white. You always know where you stand. You always have the answers. To them, India is complex, confusing, unpredictable, and in short, gray. But what if they were able to rise up to the challenge of embracing India in all its white and its black? Korean companies, particularly in India, have done this very successfully. And they have rapidly grown to multi-billion dollar profitable businesses in our country. All the while recognizing that while the Indian consumer is one of the most or perhaps the most frugal in the world, she is very value conscious and will pay more for better quality, for a long product life and for low maintenance costs. Korean companies have whizzed past their competitors in India who have been around much longer but continue to struggle to understand the grey Indian consumer. Look at what is happening in our e-commerce industry, which several of you young people will go out and work in one day. Who would have thought that the flip carts and snap deals of the world will in fact combine India's white, which is the ubiquitous available of mobile telephony throughout the hinterlands of our country with the black which is almost the complete lack of infrastructure beyond our metros to in fact bring products to the doorstep of consumers in second tier and third tier towns and that too by collecting cash on delivery on one hand, they leapfrog the lack of infrastructure using very advanced technologies. And on the other hand, they exploit the massive latent demand in the same markets because of the lack of infrastructure. Looking beyond the gray, taking advantage of the black and the white, our digital entrepreneurs are creating opportunities out of challenges that were not otherwise obvious. I have been involved in setting up two educational institutions which have made their mark in India and are starting to build a reputation globally. Both relied very heavily on this black and white thinking. When we first started to work on setting up a business school in India that would be known the world over as the top MBA program out of this country, all the experts we consulted said it could not be done in a lifetime. Maybe if you did everything right, you could get there in a couple of decades. But we would need to start small, be very selective, focus on quality, and build from the ground up. When we said our aspiration was in fact to build something of scale that was high quality from day one, people just laughed, laughed us off. There would always be a trade-off, they said. It was either scale or quality either quality or scale. One man, the late Professor Sumantra Ghoshal, renowned management thinker and, and strategy guru, rubbished this. He said, the only way to create quality 
in higher education is to build scale. He encouraged us to come up with a model that would make its mark from day one. Quality drives scale and scale drives quality. He kept drilling into us and would constantly bring up examples of Harvard, Wharton, Kellogg, the top business schools in the world, which interestingly have also the largest class sizes. This forced us to challenge conventional wisdom, be disruptive and creative and to innovate. The Indian School of Business was born in 2001 with a one-year MBA program uniquely staffed by rock star faculty from the top business schools of the world who came here to visit for six-week terms. And even as we set a very high bar for quality, the class went from 128 in year one to over 800 across two campuses in a little over 10 years. Not only that, the ISB today generates top tier research and thought leadership in management that exceeds the output of all other management institutions in India combined. And it's in its seventh year, it broke into the top 20 of the global rankings, climbing up to number 12, which was the first time an institution so young had made it there. We chose black and white. We did not settle for gray or either or, and that made all the difference. A similar approach has helped us conceive and launch Ashoka University. As all of us know, our current education system forces us all to specialize. Good students are channeled into doing PCM, physics, chemistry, mathematics. And this is then followed by an engineering degree. In our middle class thinking, Economics and commerce also lead to jobs, but if you were to study humanities and social sciences, you are probably an also ran and really doomed to have a career. But in a world where increasingly complex problems require critical thinking, multiple perspectives, collaborative leadership, where a working professional will actually switch their careers at least four or five times in their lifetime. Where lifelong learning and being able to adapt is the only constant. Specialization is a little overrated, don't you think? Where specialization is good is in some professions, but a general education coupled with specialization, depth and breadth, not depth at the expense of breadth, is the best way to inculcate 21st century skills in our college graduates. That is what a liberal education is about. It is about black and white. And it is this black and white and not black or white that will enable an Ashoka graduate with a liberal education to be a better thinker, to be a better communicator, to be a better leader, and a better citizen in this quote-unquote gray world. As you go through life, whether in your professional life or your personal life, whether in your business or your job, whether in your role in your institution or in your functions, whether in choosing subjects for what you want to do in high school or the major that you want to do in college, you will be confronted with choices, decisions, and judgment calls. There will be the easy and the obvious ones, uh, or the ones where you really have to agonize. Always remember you now have an even more important choice to make. Do you view the world with a black or white lens or with a black 
and right one. In choosing one option, are you settling, compromising, oversimplifying, or possibly even giving up too early? Do new possibilities, exciting opportunities, a bigger sense of purpose and fulfillment open up when you liberate yourself from having to make a choice? More often than not, I hope that the answer to that question will be a resounding yes. Next time, give black and white a shot. If it doesn't work, you can blame this TED talk. If it does, you are better off anyway. Delivering the commencement address at the first convocation at Ashoka University recently, the US ambassador to India, Mr. Richard Varma, spoke movingly about his visit to the home of his parents in Jalandhar, where they lived before they migrated to the United States many years ago before he was born. He said he was humbled by the journey his family took from that nondescript lane in Jalandhar to Roosevelt House, the prestigious address in New Delhi where our US ambassador currently lives. He said to our graduating Young India Fellows, leadership is never forgetting where you come from. Leadership is never forgetting where you come from. For me, this was another inspiring story of black and white. So many of us are very quick to forget or distance ourselves or discount or deny sometimes where we come from because we fear people will think the less of us if they knew our true origins. Ambassador Varma's words literally captured the idea that we can be both proud and humble at the same time, black and white. Proud of our achievements and accolades, humble about where we've come from and all the support and help that we got in getting to where we are. His words struck a particular chord for me. Few people know that I still publish the Hindi literary magazine that my father launched from that printing press he started in Patna just after independence. Naidhara today remains the oldest such magazine in the country, having been published uninterrupted for the last 66 years. A constant reminder to me of where I come from. For me, grey is not a colour. Black and white, black and white go together. They always have, they always will. Like black ink on white paper. Thank you very much.